Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Calabucas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, we're just going to talk about AI because everyone's talking about AI. And if you don't talk about AI, people say, you're not talking about AI? I don't want to listen to you. I don't hear about you. There was a, an, uh, uh, a newsletter. Now, I don't know if any of this is true. There was a newsletter that that fired up in December of last year and now has 60,000 subscribers. Since then, built 60,000 subscribers because it's an AI newsletter. Everybody's so hot to know what's going on in the world of AI. So I guess we'll talk about AI. So what were we gonna talk about today? Oh yes, search. So over the last little while, I've been relating my little stories about writing this science fiction time travel novel to you all using ChatGPT. So ChatGPT, I've been using it as a something to bounce ideas off of, something to come you know, to help me come up with names of characters, something to add little plot points, and mostly as research. So I would go in and I would say, well, this is what's going to happen. Can you can you give me the name names of five things that happen in history that are well known but not super well known? Maybe we can use I can use that as the crux of the story. So it gave me those, and I said, well, how about, can you tell me a little bit of something earlier in history that's also the crux of something important? And they did that, and it did that, and it was, it was actually really cool jamming with this thing. And I said that before on previous shows, but I, I kind of liked it because it wasn't just a cold, impersonal search engine. It was like you were talking to somebody. And you could tell it. You could say, no, that's not what I meant. I meant this. And it would say, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, let me, let me try that again. And it was like, it was literally like talking to somebody, almost as a, an assistant, a research assistant, who you could discuss things with and make and ask them to make suggestions of things. Like you, you wouldn't say, well, can you tell me about this? Can you tell me about that? And then it might trigger something new. Like, well, can you come up with something? Well, what, do you have any ideas around this? So you throw it. So a question about ideas. And some of the ideas it came up with were terrible. And some of them were pretty good or with a little bit of tweaking. We're pretty good. I think I'm, I don't know if I told you about the toaster story, but I asked it to come up with some impossible questions. And I said, what if a toaster went back in time and made, started making toast for dinosaurs? See what I'm saying? So when I was working with this thing, time went by and I realized it was not infallible. It was making a hell of a lot of mistakes. It would forget the names of characters. It would forget the bios of characters. It would forget the this is a character is short, this character is tall, this character has dark hair, this, it, it forgot a lot of things. So I had to go ahead and remember these things in different documents. So I thought, well, it's obviously not fallible. It's not infallible. It can't just do, it's not like Skynet or anything like that. It doesn't know the answer to everything. And it forgets things and it makes mistakes and it makes things up, you know, kind of like human beings do. I don't know why people are so surprised. People are like, oh, don't use anything from, uh, what was it? Somebody wrote an article saying, uh, somebody referred to an article in my my newspaper and it was never written there was never that, that human being who wrote it didn't exist it basically made up a citation like don't use it to make citations because it'll make up citations of people that don't exist and I thought well that's interesting you know I don't know why people are so freaked out about that I mean people do that people do that all the time people lie all the time people fudge all the time people make mistakes all the time sometimes they make mistakes on purpose and sometimes they don't but anyway, I digress. So the latest thing that the search engines are freaking out, specifically Google, because Google has the, what? They got the lock. What are they at? 80%, 90% of searches. And DuckDuckGo's at like 10, and MSN's like five. And so there's like, there's like they have, it's supremacy. Search supremacy is Google, which is unfortunate because I remember when I first started using the internet, there was a whole slew of search engines with all sorts of different algorithms and you could get different results. And it was really interesting and useful. You could see things that you wouldn't see on Google, right? Say something like, um, I don't know, what was the name of that? There was a, there was a, Yahoo was the first hand curated directory, but there was another one, Mozilla, that's right, Moz, uh, hand, or DMoz, hand created directory 
which unfortunately has fallen to the site. It's unfortunate because if you ask me, hand-created directories are better than these automated created directories. But again, I digress. So Google is freaking out because of ChatGPT. Why? Because people are starting to use ChatGPT in the same way I'm using it to research my book. And if you think about it, it's a lot more fun to have a conversation with an AI bot that's actually almost human than it is to talk to Google as a search engine. You should try this as an experiment. Just try this as an experiment. Tell me what you think is a better experience. Fire up Google and ask it about something. Like for example, I asked it about a historical event, the Library of Alexandria, when it burned down, uh, what people were like in Alexandria, what, was, what, what the library was like, what the buildings were like, what the people were like. I had a conversation. So search those things on Google. And then after you've gone through the ads for like junky places and, and Wikipedia entries and other things that are encyclopedic and eventually go through all these ads and all this this and all this that, things that are targeted to you but have nothing to do with the Library of Alexandria, say, hey, are you looking for a new car? Here, here's a listing on the Library of Alexandria. So go through that interface and enjoy that interface for a while, right? Feel that interface. Tell me what you like, think about that interface. And then go to ChatGPT, fire up ChatGPT, and do the exact same thing. Ask it the same kind of questions in the same kind of environment. And you tell me if you think you're going to be able to get better answers and a better quality experience in a shorter period of time from ChatGPT or Google. What is going to give you more relevant information? Now, of course, you're going to say, well, ChatGPT isn't connected to the, the live net, so it might not give me live stuff. So if I'm asking for what's the temperature in Spokane today, obviously I'm going to go to Google for something like that. But if you're researching other things, if you're asking about even things that are not particularly old, say, hey, uh, which, which one of these cars is bigger? The uh, 2023... Uh, Kia Sportage or the 2023 Mazda CX-5. And if you were, were to do that on Google, you would get ad after ad after ad after ad, retargeting, retargeting in your Facebook stream and your Amazon stream. And every single stream after that, you would get car, 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 because it thinks you want a car. Go to ChatGPT, do the same thing. It will give you a nice little analysis telling you exactly what you need to know. So no wonder Google's freaking out about it. No wonder Google's freaking out about it because they're just, they're turning into a less relevant engine. They're no longer the useful search engine. They are a pile of facts with a pile of ads on it. And if I don't want a pile of facts and a pile of ads and I want opinions and I want uh, a a, a somebody to talk to about things, then I will go to ChatGPT, which is why they're scrambling. They're probably going to lose market share like crazy. Imagine what happens when ChatGPT is connected to live data. Why would I ever want to go to Google again? So even though Google has the supremacy in that space, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will be there. There were search engines before Google. There will be search engines after Google. There were social media before Facebook. There was social media. There will be social media after Facebook. The only question is, what will those things look like? So no matter how big a behemoth gets, and I think they're both, both Meta and, and Google are getting close to almost 20 years old, who knows what's next on the horizon? So these things, they look like behemoths, and they look like they can never be, never be stopped. But you never know what happens next. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.